can you add loading indicators to server components in Next.js? Well, yeah, but not the way you are used to. You have probably used UseState, UseDetect and spinners in client components, but server components are a totally different ballgame. In this video, I will show you the right way to add loading indicators to server components using Next.js features like loading TSX, route level streaming and suspense boundaries. And if you are thinking yourself that why should you care? Well, the harsh truth is that if your app takes a while to load and all the user sees during that time is a blank screen, you have already lost them. So if you want your app to feel fast and polished so that your users actually use it, this video is for you. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So here on the left hand side, I have VS Code open with a Next.js application that has some product information in it. And on the right hand side, we can see the application in the browser. So it just lists a couple of products over here. And when we click one open, it will display the product details and some reviews for that product. All of these components are server components. So we will take a look on how to add some loading indicators for them in order for the user experience to be better. So let's start with the products list page. So let me just demonstrate this. So if I go to the front page of my application and then again to the products page and I open it now, you can see that it takes a while to load and then it shows the product list. So let's see how that looks in the code. So over here we have the products route and inside of it we have the page for that product page. And up here we are getting the products with the get products and the get products is coming from the uh, API folder and we can see it over here. So API and index.ts. So this file here is just to simulate the API. So what we have here is get products function that we saw we were using and it just returns an array of uh, JSON objects. And we have this delay at the end of it before it returns the products and the delay is for two seconds just to demonstrate and simulate an API call. Then we have the get product by ID function that uses the get products function which takes two seconds to load and then finds the given product from it and returns it. So this function will take also two seconds to load. And last we have the get product reviews function which will return reviews for the given product ID. And again it's just an array of JSON objects and down here we are waiting four seconds before returning the uh, reviews for the given product ID. So this function will take four seconds to load. All right, so that's our mock API for this uh, demonstration. So back to the products page. So this page that is open right here. So we are getting the products and then looping through them and displaying a link for each product. So pretty simple. And as you can see, if we refresh the page, it takes that two seconds to load before it renders anything. And you can really see it when you come from the uh, front page and then go back to the products page. Now you can see it takes two seconds and after two seconds when the get products function is ready, it will show the product list. So if you wanted to show a loading indicator for this products call, how would we do this? Well, the easiest way is to add a loading.tsx file. It's a special Next.js file that Next.js will use to show a loading indicator if the file exists. So let's add that and see how it works. So in the products folder, so in the products route, I'm gonna create a new file called loading.tsx like this. And then I will paste in some code over here like this. Let me close this one and save it. And as you can see, we are just returning a function that renders a loading products text. Of course, for real application, you would want to show some kind of other indicator, for example, a skeleton. But just to demonstrate the loading behavior of Next.js, I wanted to keep this very clean and simple. So it displays the loading products text. So now if we go back to the front page in our application and back to the products page, we should see this loading products uh, text. So let's see. All right, looks like it's working. So as long as the 
data is loading inside of our page, it will show that loading indicator that we placed inside of the loading TSX over here. So that's the most simple and straightforward way to show loading indicator with server components inside Next.js. So next, let's take a look a little bit more complicated situation. So if we open up the product details page, now it shows loading products. So what happens here is that if we have defined a loading.tsx file, it will apply to all of these uh, sub routes also if they don't have their own loading TSX. So basically this page, it will go up in folders as long as it finds a loading TSX and then it will display it. But now, as you can see, if we open the page again, it shows the loading products text, which we don't want to show for the product details page, but we would probably want to show loading uh, product details. So how can we fix it? Well, we just have to define a loading TSX file inside of our ID route. So in the slash products slash the product ID. So I'm just going to actually copy this loading TSX from here and then paste it inside of the ID folder and change the text like this and save it. So now if we refresh this product details page, we can see it shows the loading product details indicator. So that's good. But as you can see, it takes quite a long time to load this product details page. And if we check out what this page has in the code, so I'm going to open up the page file for this product details. We can see that in it, we are getting the ID from the params and then re rendering product details and product reviews components. So let's take a look at those components. So the product details component, what it does, it uses the get product by ID function from the API. And if you remember, it had the two second delay and then it just renders the product uh, information down here. But this call here is taking two seconds. And if we take a look on the reviews component, what it does, it uses the get product reviews function from the API and then renders the reviews. So if you remember this call here, it took four seconds to load. And just to recap, if we open up our mock API file that simulates an API, in the get product reviews function, we are waiting four seconds. So it takes four seconds to run this function. And the get product by ID takes two seconds because it uses the get products function up here, which has two second delay. So just to recap, so you know where those uh, delays come from. So what happens here is that this page will display the loading indicator so long that both product details and product reviews page are loaded. So if you think about it, we have this component, it takes two seconds, so it's faster loading. And this takes four seconds, which takes longer to load. And if you think about it, the product details is much more important information for the user than the reviews. So before the reviews, we really want to show the details of the product. So basically you have uh, information of different hierarchies. So in these kind of cases, it's not the best solution to use the loading TSX file, because basically we are waiting two seconds before displaying the details information, even though it's already available. So how can we then fix this? Before we take a look on how to properly handle that kind of situation, I just want to say thank you to this week's sponsor, UpCloud. With UpCloud, you can easily manage your cloud infrastructure without the usual headaches. They offer a wide range of services, including cloud servers, managed databases, Kubernetes, block storage, VPN gateways, you name it. Personally, I've enjoyed using their managed databases. They are quick to set up and work great with Next.js applications. And I even made a video showing how to connect a Next.js app to UpCloud's managed Postgres. The link is down in the description if you want to check it out. So if you are looking for a solid place to run your databases or infrastructure, UpCloud handles the heavy lifting so you can focus on building without worrying about the servers and setup. And if you sign up using the link below, you'll get 50 euros credits which is more than enough to get you started. So thank you again to UpCloud for sponsoring this video. So how to handle this kind of situation properly when you have 
two components and the other is faster than the other and you want to display the data for the first one even when the second component is still loading. Well, the answer is using suspense boundaries. So what we want to do is go up here and import suspense from React like this. And then we want to wrap both of these components inside of the suspense boundary like this. So over here, we are just placing the product details inside of the suspense boundary. And by providing a fallback prop for the suspense, we can define what will be shown when the product details component is still loading. So for the product details, I just put a div with loading product details text. And then for the product reviews, I put a div with the text loading product reviews like this. So let's save this and see how it works. So I'm going to refresh the product page. And we can see that the loading product details displayed here. And then the component was rendered when the data was ready. So the two seconds had passed. And then the reviews component was still loading, but also displayed the component once the data for that was loaded. So it took the four seconds. So let's see it again. So now both of them are loading. And now the details component is ready and it displays it right away. And then the reviews component will be displayed a little while after when it has finished loading the data. So this is really easy and handy way to define these loading boundaries for your components. And now if we take a look on the product page again, we can see that it shows both of the components right away. But what we can do to make this even better is to show the reviews component after the details component is ready. So let's say we didn't want to show the reviews before the product details were visible. So one way you probably could do this is by putting the product reviews component inside that suspense boundary. So I'm going to just comment this out. So now let's save it. And now if we refresh the page, let's see what happens. So it says loading product details. And then it shows both the details and reviews. But what happens here is that this won't be rendered before both of the components are loaded. So we are basically back in the first situation again. So the details component is waiting for the reviews component to be loaded and then renders the both of them. So the fix for this is pretty easy and you might already guess it, but we can take this suspense boundary, take the reviews component from there and then just move this suspense boundary inside of the product details suspense, suspense boundary. So what happens here now is that it won't show the loading reviews before the details is loaded. But once the details is loaded, it will show the details component, even if the uh, reviews component is still loading. So let's see how it works. So I'm going to save this and let's refresh the page. So right now it's loading the details and it shows the loading details. And once the details are loaded, we can see the details, but still the reviews component is loading and it will be displays, displayed once it's ready. So let's see one more time. It shows the loading details, now loading reviews, and it shows the reviews once they are ready. So the lesson here, what I wanted to emphasize is that you can also put suspense boundaries inside of suspense boundaries if you want to make this kind of uh, structure for your application. If you found this video helpful, I think you would enjoy my newsletter too. The link is down in the description where you can sign up for that. And don't forget to sign up for UpCloud and use the link down in the description to get 50 euros worth of credit.